washed it and patted it dry but then we've got to remove any bones now you can see that line down there to the right that is where the bones will be we don't ever find any at this side I don't know why but there you go and they're always at the thick end of the piece so you've got to pull them out never acceptable to serve fish with bones in. Right, that's the bones got rid of. So that's just a thin piece of fish. I'll do that just as an extra bit. But this should make two decent sized pieces for battering and frying. So I'll cut that in half. So we'll get rid of these. So I've got a large potato here. I'm going to peel this and cut it into chips. And those will be cooked first before the fish. When you're making chips, it's very important to dry your potato before you, you cut it into chips. Because when you're deep frying it, if the potato is wet, the fat will spit. So that's just a tip. So, let's cut this into chips. Now I like my chips a little bit chunky. So I'm going to cut it into slices first. This should be enough chips for two people. two people I would say there you go so what we're going to do we're going to partially cut the chips until this almost soft and then after we've cooked the fish we will pop them back in the fryer to brown off right the fish has prepared the chips now for the batter got a cup of self-raising flour there we need a dash of vinegar a good shake of salt and a pinch of bicarb with bicarbonate of soda in other words just a tiny bit it helps to make it light so using a whisk I'm going to whisk in some water Just get it to a, a bit of a small paste first Keep adding a bit of water until you get the right consistency. And you to give it a good old whisk to make sure there are no lumps in it. Just empty the whisk. 
everything hangs around in there and it's a nuisance but a whisk is such a useful thing for getting everything smooth. to coat the fish with thick batter but that will, will not give you the light crispy batter that you want so you've got to be prepared for it to make a little bit of mess in the, fat, in the chip pan but it can all be scooped out when you're finished so that's about right I would say fairly runny then what we want in here is some plain flour to coat the fish. This will make sure that the batter sticks to the flour and sticks to the fish. You've got to flour it first. Just pat off the excess. Right, so we're ready to put the chips in now. Right, the fat's fairly hot now, so we're going to put load the chips in gently. Always put your chips in into the basket first and lower them in because if you just drop them in it will splash and it will burn you. So we're going to pop a lid on here now and let them cook for about five minutes. Right, the chips are lightly browned, they've been cooking for five minutes so I'm going to take them out and let them drain and then we'll finish them off later when we've cooked the fish. We want the fat to be fairly hot for the fish, otherwise it will sink down and stick to the bottom of the pan. So I don't know whether I'll be able to cook two pieces or not, we'll see. So what we do we, to check the fat, we drop a little of the batter in and it should rise back up, which it has done. So into the batter. Coat it gently on both sides and drop it in. That's one piece. So I think we've got room for another piece in there. So we'll coat it in the batter and drop it in the pan. So that will need to cook now for about five or six minutes until the batter's brown and which time the fish should be cooked <coughs> right the fish is nice and golden now so we're going to take it out of the pan and I'm going to pop the chips back in <coughs> to crisp up right the chips are all crisp and brown now. I'm going to turn off the gas, give them a, a shake. It's just taking about one and a half minutes to, to finish those chips off. So there you go. Fish with chunky chips. I'm serving that with some lovely tartar sauce because that's how I like them. So there you go, homemade fish and chips. 
Can't wait to eat these. See you later. Bye.